We want to dig deeper on this now with Los Angeles Chief Heat Officer Marta Segura. Marta, thanks so much for sharing part of your Labor Day with us. Chief Heat Officer, you, you have a, a difficult task. You're trying to improve your city's response to heat waves. Last year, the mm -hmm. LA Times said that California had largely failed to provide adequate resources to some of the communities that are most at risk. How is the city doing now compared to last year? Right. Well, I want to remind everyone that I was just appointed maybe eight, 12 weeks ago, but I think the city is faring much better also because um, we are opening up our facilities this year. We have 12 additional cooling centers. We have over 200 cool spots that we've invested in, hydration stations, shade structures, et cetera. And we are doing this in collaboration, not just with other city departments, but with the county and the state and surrounding cities to make sure that our services are seamless um, because people don't care whether you're the city of LA or the county of LA or what jurisdiction you belong to, they just want to stay thermally comfortable, right? We're, we're going for thermal comfort versus cold or cool because we want people to understand that their um, indoor temperature doesn't have to be 63 or 65, right? So I think LA is doing much better this year than last for multiple, for multiple reasons, but we do need strategic communication. So we've opened up a heat relief for LA campaign that tells people where these cooling centers are, where these cool spots are. It's building partnerships with non-governmental organizations, businesses and nonprofits alike. So they can also help us spread the word to the most vulnerable communities. And as you mentioned, Los Angeles is in, not only in an urban heat island, but it has these frontline communities that suffer disproportionately from air pollution burden. So those are the communities with the most um, uh, severe responses to extreme heat because they're already suffering disproportionately from illness, air pollution, mm -hmm. and you combine that with extreme heat, it sends people, more people to the hospital and experiencing premature deaths. So we wanna really target and work with those communities, invest in those communities, and we have programs in Los Angeles that are helping us do that, like the Climate Equity LA series, and our partnerships that are growing in the community to ensure that communication gets out there. So Marty, you mentioned some of the, the short-term solutions uh, in terms of making people more aware of the risks they face, uh, the cooling centers that are available. There, there's obviously hydration and, and quick mitigation efforts that could solve the problem now. But I'm wondering what mm -hmm. you think the biggest adjustment is long-term, not only for Californians, but to all Americans, because from the looks of it, temperatures are only going to continue to climb and there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to be adjusted long term. Yeah, well, what the city of LA is doing, it, it's adjusting its climate adaptation strategy, strategies, its green infrastructure um, with our decarbonization plan, uh, making LA go 100% renew, renewable energy sources. What that does long term, it reduces our greenhouse gas emissions, but also retrofits our buildings to ensure that they're climate adapted, energy efficient, running on renewable energy so people can stay cooler, but it doesn't affect their bill as much in the future. And also our new buildings that are gonna go up, um, we're passing legislation so that new buildings are all uh, fully decarbonized, meaning they're not hooked up to gas lines so that Los Angeles is no longer contributing to the greenhouse gas emissions. So I think it's a combination of working with the utility working with city policies to ensure that you're investing in the most vulnerable communities first and foremost, like the Justice 40 initiative asks us to do with the Biden administration, because if we don't address the most vulnerable communities first and foremost, we're not only not gonna see climate solutions for everyone, but we're gonna continue to suffer from extreme heat and it's just gonna get worse for everyone. So this is a place where that, um, that saying about uh, lifting, uh, sorry, rising boats, uh, mm. must rising lift for tides all, lift all boats. Yeah. Rising, rising <laughs> tides must lift all, not just some. So thank you right. for that. Uh, but yeah, we definitely have to focus on those most vulnerable communities and it will lift all of us. It, it is a difficult job and we appreciate that there are folks like you doing it. Marta Segura, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take care. Of course.